hello beautiful people welcome back to our channel right now southeast is in full radar of everyone and other political stakeholders are beginning now to talk initially it was the case of propaganda uh, political gimmicking right now they are realizing the harsh truth is staring them in the face and the truth is the will of the people is beginning to come out. At the beginning, it was a case of, you know, we can, you know, settle down where they are my boys. We can, you know, see how we can, you know, walk, we'll, talk, we'll walk around issues. We'll talk to them. And now they can't seem to talk to them because hey, the thing has gone beyond. It is now almost like autopilot. Now everybody is talking at the same time. Before we go to the newspaper to find out what political, indeed, but political leaders I'm talking about from the Southeastern Zone are telling South telling and the presidency to do because this one is now beyond them we like you subscribe to our channel by clicking on the rest subscribe button beside it you say by notification icon please go ahead click on it to get notified as soon as we update our channel on youtube where the senate chief whip oji uzo kalo has described the re resurgence of of menaces and insecurity in the southeast as unfortunate saying the impasse was not beyond the discussion that could restore peace and tranquility in the region. He said, the situation cannot be solved politically, but through pacification of the people of the Southeast. Adding that a committee should be set up to interact with the aggrieved. Speaking at an interactive session with journalists at the National Assembly on Wednesday, the former governor of Abia State insisted that President Buhari as a father of the nation should look into the grievances of the people of the southeast with passion he maintained my position has always been that president buhari is the president of the federal republic of nigeria and he is a father and as a father the president should look passionately towards that towards southeast there is nothing special about people not being listened to Buhari is the president of Nigeria. The problem can be solved not by political means, and the Southeast governor should do more than they require. I was a governor, and not just a senator. Governors should interact more with the people, as it's not just the work of the president. Kalu said governors should not abdicate from doing all they could to ensure peace, but should show commitment instead leaving security issues to president buhari according to him it was normal that good and bad children exist anywhere but depending on how they were handled the nation needed unity more than anything else right now our governor should do more the president being the father of the nation they might have some good children some bad children in the kingdom of a king you may have all kinds of people so I want the president to look passionately into that area. Let him look back as the father of the nation and see how he can set up a small committee and pacify area because this country needs unity more than anything that we needed. Without unity, those who are planning to run for House of Assembly election, senatorial election and presidential election are going nowhere. So it's a thing that the president as a father and the people of the Southeast should sort themselves out. Well, for the very first time, this, let's tell ourselves the truth. Days of propaganda is over. See, at the beginning, let's just do, let's turn this into a political issue. It has gone beyond politics. Maybe at the beginning it was political. Maybe they just wanted uh, somebody standing on not to be having peace. Or maybe they want a situation where they will say things are happening. This particular governor or this particular, or this particular politician cannot handle issues. It's incompetent. But right now, they have reawoken in the heart and the mind of the people. They are no more thinking on the grounds of politics. They're just thinking, okay, they've been marginalized. They need to leave. It is now emotional state. It's no longer political state. And so right now, if it was political before, if it was having political undertone, right now it has touched the empathy and the sympathy of the Ndimos. So if you're talking APC, PDP, APGA, it has gone beyond that. And even those who understand these dynamics are beginning to speak up before it go go beyond but we're going to feel the pulse of nigerians because of course they're talking honestly 
honestly, sentiment aside, this thing that is happening is how it needs to be handled with utmost care. If you don't have leadership skills, please, please stay off the the arrangement of um, pacifying, arrangement of um, uniting, arrangement of trying to bring stakeholders into a round table discussion because it needs a great level of leadership skills. Some will be harsh in talking, some will be very angry, some will be some will be very pained because look, lives were lost. In the process of one or two political undertone lives, genuine lives were lost. So it's not something that you come and begin to stay well, what is all this? You have to when they show their anger, they show their vexation, their grievances, be calm, be quiet, see them as your children, see them as your own people. That way you actually bear their essences and look beyond their grievances and see the beauty of the unity. Or else, if you go beyond, if you don't have that leadership skills, you could lose it. Honestly, I mean, you lose it before you, the little thing that started as nothing becomes a, an inferno that cannot even be controlled. Okay, but let's feel the pulse of Nigeria very quickly. This one here is saying, Pacify Ibo for what now? You people started this whole chaos. You made uh, moves in political area. You brought down politicians, traditional rulers of other regions, invaded the peaceful South-South, and still hasn't apologized. The East has no natural resources as contribution to our treasury, but get allocation. So please tell Nigerians that, it, that tell Nigerians what are Igbo's financial contribution in the East to deserve apology. Excuse me? Honestly? Are there people who reason this way? Okay, okay, but l l let me address this person that just said this very quickly, please. Permit me. Uh, natural resources. Igbo state have oil. Enugu have. When you hear the coal city of Enugu, it's because they have coal. Uh, um, Ebony have lead. Um, Abia have oil. Anambra have liquefied gas, gas in quantum. They have oil, they have gas. They have, Igbos have human resources. Now, if you want to quantify all this, where do you think they, they usually say Niger Delta? It's because the likes of Abia, um, Imo, is inside. Then the lead. Is it, is it, I, honestly, I think we we'll, we'll actually have a problem of education here. I think people should be educated. You see, see, that's the problem. You can imagine what this person is saying. So you just feel that, um, the only natural resources, the only natural resources that can make a country grow, uh, then you are now seeing, looking at them um, south south as the only people who have what it takes to grow. Then you have a real shock. <laughs> you are going to be in for a real shock because if you look at if anything needs to happen, then it breaks out. The food basket of the nation, I can bet you the whole Nigeria will come looking for Benue. Because before you start thinking of natural resources, you must eat first. And right now, we don't even have the technological know-how yet to begin to go on mechanized farming yet. We, we import everything, even to pick. So whether you like it or not, at that subsistence level, Nigerians will depend on Benin. So if you want to go by that, Benin may not have the natural resources you're calling, but their fertile land will feed you and feed your region. And by so doing, they become a stakeholder in what happens in your country.